Hi, I'm Craig Phillips and I'm going to show you how to install and use the Virtual Controller Assistant plugin for Euroscope. First you will need to install the Microsoft Visual C++ 2010 x86 runtime package. You will need to ensure that you install the x86 version despite your Windows bitrate. This is because the plugin is compiled using 32-bit so it can be used on 32-bit and 64-bit machines. Because VCA is an update to UK Assistant, I would advise if you have UK Assistant installed that you rename the plugin settings. To do this, go to the plugin settings file of your Euroscope profile and find UK Assistant and replace with Virtual Controller Assistant. Both names are case sensitive, so make sure you type exactly how it is shown. This just saves you having to re input all of the settings for VCA, as most of the settings are the same as UKA. VCA has six main features, squat code allocation, initial altitude setter, history trails, intention codes, time display and logging, all of which I shall show you how to configure in this video. To install the plugin into a Euroscope profile, go to Other Set, Plugins. Make sure that you remove any countdown timer and UK assistant plugins as VCA supersedes these plugins so all features are kept in one plugin. Click load and navigate to the virtual controller assistant DLL that you've extracted and click open. To allow the plugin to draw on the radar screen, ensure that the standard ES radar screen is moved from the forbidden to draw on types list to the allow to draw on types list. Once you're happy with the setup, click close. To configure score codes in the command bar, type dot VCA space S, then enter. Score codes are automatically set for selected departure airports once a flight plan has been received or if a controller overwrites a squawk code. Squawk codes in the UK are usually given based on the direction of flight to ensure squawk codes are not duplicated. As an example, I shall enable the squawk codes for Heathrow. To do this, type the four digit airport ICAO code into the text box and click add or enter. Newly added ICAOs are enabled by default. You can disable the squawk code allocation for an airport by unchecking the box next to the ICAO code in the list. Or you can select the ICAO in the list and click remove. To disable the squawk codes entirely, uncheck the enable squawk codes box. Once you're happy with the setup, click OK. The squawk code allocations are no longer restricted to UK airports. Squawk codes can now be set anywhere outside of the UK. Squawk codes are allocated based on the direction of flight. If the direction of flight cannot be determined, a random non-duplicated squawk code is given. OK, I'm connected as Heathrow Delivery. The plugin is automatically assigned a squawk code for these two aircraft. To recycle a squawk code, set the squawk code to 0200 or you can have an event set up. For example, a right mouse click. Events can be set on lists or tags. To set up an event, go to the list or tag settings and select the item type. For example, the squawk error indicator. Then in the left or right button drop down, scroll down to the virtual controller assistant and you'll see a list of events associated with VCA. For this example, I'm going to select the Recycle Squawk Code and hit OK. So now when I right click the Squawk Code, it will recycle the Squawk Code. Squawk Codes can now be recycled on airborne traffic, providing the controller has Squawks enabled and has assumed track of the aircraft. To configure the initial altitudes, in the command bar, type dot VCA space I then enter. Initial altitudes are automatically set by the plugin once a flight plan has been received. Initial altitudes are dependent on the SID and the departure route. In this list I have all the initial altitudes set for Heathrow. To add a new issue altitude type the four digit airport ICAO and the name of the SID. 
the name of the SID must match what is defined in the ESC file. So for example I'm going to add a Dover 6 Juliet departure at Heathrow. So at Heathrow Dover 6 Juliet the initial altitude is 6000 feet and then click add or enter. New initial altitudes are enabled by default to disable individual initial altitudes uncheck the checkbox next to the relevant item or you can delete a selected item to disable initial altitudes entirely uncheck the enable initial altitudes checkbox once you're happy with the setup click OK now because I'm already connected the plugin has already assigned initial altitude of 6000 feet to this aircraft To configure history trails in the command bar type dot VCA space H and enter. In this window you can change the shape and the colour of the trail of the aircraft. To make the size of the trail progressively smaller check the degrading trail box. To change the trail type select either circle, diamond or square. To progressively fade the trail click the fade trail box. To have smooth edges around the shape, just check the anti-aliasing box. To change the number of history shown, change the number in the count box from 0 to 99. To change the trial colour, click the coloured box and choose the colour. You can disable history trails entirely by unchecking the enable history trails box. Once you're happy with the setup, click OK. It's probably a good idea to disable ES default trails. To do this, go to Other Set, Display Settings, and set the number of history dots to zero. Another feature of VCA is UK intention codes. There is no configuration required for the intention codes. The intention code is determined by the direction of flight. It's used to quickly indicate to the controller where the aircraft is headed. There are too many codes so I'm not going to list them all now. Aircraft landing in the UK display the last two digits of the arrival ICAO code, for example LL for Heathrow. If the intention code is unknown, the arrival ICAO is shown. The intention code can be displayed on a tag or in a list. I'm going to show you how to add the intention code to a tag, but it will work similarly for lists. Go to Other Set, Tag Editor, select the relevant tag family, type and level, click Add Item, and select Virtual Controller Assistant Intention Code, and then you can move the item up to the relevant position. Once you're happy with the setup, click OK. The countdown timer has now been implemented in the plugin instead of having a separate plugin. So it works exactly how it did before. Select a 1, 2, or 3 minute timer, and a sound will alert when the timer has elapsed. To toggle the visibility of the countdown timer, in the command bar, type dot cd and then enter. Sometimes the position of the timer goes off the screen when you're using multiple monitors. To reset the timer position, in the command bar, type dot cdp and then enter. VCA also has time logging and display. VCA can display times for departure, arrival, calculated or estimated off-block time and actual off-block time. To configure how the times are displayed in the command bar type dot VCA space T. To show a colon between the hours and minutes for the calculated takeoff time check the separate time with the colon box. To change the format of how the actual times are displayed, select the relevant type in the drop down list. You can change the colours of the state of the times, so if a CTOT is early, it would display green, else red, and modifying time shows grey. Once you're happy with the setup, click OK. 
I'm going to show you how to add the times to the departure list but it will work similarly for tags. Click the S button on the departure list, click add item and scroll down to the virtual controller assistant. I've already added an extra column for the estimated departure time with events so when the left mouse button is clicked on the time it will show a pop-up where the controller can revise the CTOP time and right click to reset the time. The default estimated departure time comes from the flight plan. Once you're happy with the setup click OK. So I'll show a quick demo of the time. So this aircraft here, the Skyways 590, has an estimated off-block time of 1340. This time can be revised because I've set an event up in, in the display list. So when I left click on the time, it will display an input box with the time that has already come from the flight plan. So I can set this time to 1350 for example, and then hit enter, and it will revise the time and it will change the colour accordingly. The actual off-block time comes from when the status of the aircraft has changed um, to push. So if I was logged on as a controller and changed the aircraft status to push, the actual off-block time will be filled in, like it has here for this EasyJet. So he's pushed at 13.45. Another feature of VCA is departure and arrival time logging. To configure where the log is saved, in the command bar type .vca space lowercase l. To disable the logs, you can uncheck the enable log checkbox. To change the location of where the log is saved, click the browse button and change the location and then hit save. Once you're happy with the setup, click OK. The file is never overwritten, it is always appended. So in the log it shows the aircraft's call sign, the pilot name, the departure ICAO, SID and runway, the arrival ICAO, star and runway, whether uh, AD for arrival or departure, and the time the event happened.